Welcome to Dominate Your Day podcast. This is the podcast that adds value to leaders who want to make a difference in the workplace. We believe each person is unique and has a purpose they can live out every day and make an impact in the world. Here at Dominate Your Day podcast, we hear stories from leaders who have used their unique talents to transform themselves and their companies from the inside out. Welcome to Dominate Your Day, and I want you to introduce you to Patty Johnson. She is the former CEO of People Results. And I'm excited, Patty, for you to be here. I want to hear your story as a consultant, as kind of a change agent and somebody that gets excited about talking about change, because that is what is constant right now in the workplace. So welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Um, Patty, you've written a book, you've been consulting for years, and now you're kind of at this next phase of, of continuing to help others, mentor others. Tell us how you got here. What brought you on this journey? <laughs> That's from, a big question, Dana. It is a big question. It's um, a journey and everybody's is. story is so unique and different. I just love to hear yeah. what, you know, how you got into, uh, mm-hmm. now you're author, speaker, Yeah. continue to consult, sold your business, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us the journey. Wow. Okay. That is a big question. I, I kind of, hmm, I think I would explain it in my career and journey in phases, probably. So I grew up small town, Oklahoma, Ponca city. My world was very, very small. Okay. I I couldn't even like, I couldn't even picture what I'm doing now and what I've done for the last 10, 15 years. Wasn't even something that was on my radar. So I think, um, I started there and then I think the second phase was probably my time at Accenture. I spent like 16, 17 years at Accenture. And that's how, you know, those times when you can, you kind of learn how to work and how to like, there's very, there are very high standards there. And it, it helped me up my game. Like you had to do things a certain way and they had to be great, which was really good for me. Um, and I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't have ever even started my own business if I hadn't had that experience. So that's second phase. And then third phase, entrepreneur had no idea what I was doing. I mean, you have those times when you, you're like, mm-hmm. thought I was figuring it out, was looking back. I knew about 50% of what I thought I knew and, but started a business. We can talk about why there were multiple reasons and um, then grew that business to the point that eventually it was just acquired and, and um, that the people results team carries on and doing wonderful work with clients but those are kind of my three phases, I would say. Small yeah. town girl, corporate, big consulting company, and then entrepreneur in building something from scratch. And all three pretty different, I guess. That's, I guess, yeah. kind of a top of mind explanation. Yeah. So a couple of things. I'm curious about what your strengths are, because I think they probably popped or probably energizing you to go ahead and start your business or go ahead and join that corporate company from small town girl. But what do you recall when you've taken your Clifton strengths, do you recall your, your top five or a couple of them that really kind of helped you as you were navigating those times? I think, um, strategic Mm -hmm. was, is my dominant. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I think that's helped me because I've been a little bit uh, you know, kind of a big picture. What are you trying to do? The other thing, I I'm not going to use the right word. You'll know. Yeah. Determination has been my. Yeah. Intro. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of an achiever kind of talent that we see yes. is like, you know, we're irresponsible. I'm going to just keep going until I make it happen. That catalyst yeah. kind of person. Strategic looks at the big picture and can spot the patterns very quickly. So mm-hmm. probably when you were starting on your own, there were some probably moments where you were using that and looking yes. at pathways. And right. then probably as you started um, into um, your owning your own business. So I think today, as we talk through your journey, I think there's so many women out there that are in corporate and they're thinking, hmm, should I start my own business? I see these people <laughs> doing it. And I don't know. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think the, it takes it takes grit. It takes determination right. and a kind of a never give up attitude. How did you what kind of catapulted you to start your own business when you did? Well, for me, it was a blend of 
um, wanting the career I wanted and the life I wanted. I had mm-hmm. continuing to progress. I was traveling more than I wanted. I was in a global role. And so part of, I could see my career, it was like, it, that was going to be the way it was going to be, right? Mm-hmm. I had gotten to that point. And so it was that, but yet I still was ambitious, which is often kind of a dirty word with women, which is unfortunate, isn't it? But um, I, I wanted to, to do more, but I also had young kids. We were mm-hmm. very involved and in that. So I was trying to figure out how do I put this all together? I was also, you know, in a huge organization, you don't get as much satisfaction of helping people fix stuff, get something yeah. done. You're, you're, it, everything's so big. So mm-hmm. you threw it all together. And I, and the other thing I want to say, we talk about strategic and determination. Yeah. I am not a big risk taker. And so mm-hmm. I had to taking the leap to starting my own business. There was a whole series of things I did through to mess with my little mind and get it comfortable mm-hmm. that I could do it. Um, and it's interesting. Yeah, I do get that question a lot about starting mm-hmm. your own business sometimes it's not, it's not like determination or can you do it? It's like, does what you like and what you're good at fit Mm -hmm. starting your own business? Because there are some extremely talented, wonderful people that they just don't line up well with starting your own business. And that's okay. And you mentioned something that I like to talk about a lot, which is mindset. And it's really, it's really, like you said, you had to do a lot of different things. It was kind of like you knew the end result is you wanted to blend your, you know, your family life and your work life and not be on the road. But you also had a passion to see some results with people you were working with and and work Mm -hmm. on projects in a closer proximity rather than a big, big corporate. So being able to do all that is, is powerful. So that's probably your why and what drove you to keep figuring out how to make it happen. Right. Yes. I think I thought there is, I can turn all these dials so that it, it kind of fits what I want. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think was, um, two things probably, and I've used them consistently when I've taken on big changes or risk in my life. One, when I started my business, talk about my (laughs) mindset, Mm -hmm. I play a little trick on myself and said, okay, uh, this is going to be a year experiment. Hmm. And I went counter to what I normally, I have very high expectations. Mm -hmm. I set very low expectations, both in terms of income, clients, the whole thing. And I Mm -hmm. kind of said, okay, we're going to do a year long experiment. And at the end of this year, you will know what to do. And that's how I tricked myself basically into taking what was an uncomfortable leap. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that really helped me is, and I've, I use this repeatedly is if you don't know how to do something or you're afraid of something, um, start educating yourself. I went and Mm -hmm. talked to, before I started my own business, I probably talked to, I don't know, 30 people and Mm -hmm. asked for advice. What was their experience like, you know, and all of a sudden then I kind of started to, ah, okay. Okay. This doesn't feel so scary. Those two things probably were really the main drivers for me on mind, the about mindset in, mm-hmm. um, in making that change in my career and my life. I like how you kind of tricked yourself. What I <laughs> said the first, you know, and I continue to say, we're going to test and we're going to learn. We're going to test exactly. and we're going to learn. <laughs> Experiment, adjust, it, experiment. That's no- a key part of my, of the book that, that I've written is that whole thing. That is right. What you just described that is critical mm-hmm. for people who are comfortable starting and leading change that it can't be all perfect. It's not going to be. Well, let's talk about that. So you wrote a book called Waves. Is that right? Waves. Make waves. Make waves. What was the catalyst for you starting that book and writing that book? <laughs> Gosh. I, I am hearing change. I'm hearing yes. that you, you talk a lot about change. So let's talk about that. Well, um, that's a great question because writing a book had been on my bucket list. And I actually had a mentor who had written and written several successful books and an informal mentor, not, you know, Mm -hmm. and her, her, she pushed me hard. Why do you want to write it? What success look like? If you write the book, you're not going to make a lot of money. It's going to take a boatload of time. Why are you doing it? Why, why, why? And she kind of like, why don't you think about that? Let's talk again. And I finally realized that I knew all those things to be true. Yes, it was a bucket list item, but I kind of felt like I had all these ideas and thoughts, 
that were kind of bottled up inside me. And I thought, I just felt a need to put it out there. It was a lot of work and I, more than I realized. I'm so glad I did it. But um, it was, I think it started with that, you know, just I want, I want to put something out there. I think I want to, I want it to kind of help me articulate my thoughts on, on all of it and put it out there and speak on it and write about it. And, and it's one of the best things I ever did. One of the hardest, but one of the best. But you did it. And I, I love that you had this mentor that really pushed you to say, Oh, are you sure? you're going to spend this time? Are you going to, and making you think about it before you really got into it and, mm -hmm. and that you knew your why of what was, what yes. was the catalyst for that? So what is making waves about? Tell us a little okay. bit about that. Yes. Um, so make waves is about how you start change at work and in your life. How do you start change? How do you deal with resistance? How do you, you know, face change that maybe you didn't choose? How do you get started? The mindset of change of, of being a wave maker is the term I use. It's really people that, you know, that are comfortable in, in leading change and starting change. And, you know, one of the things in there is wave maker DNA, which I did a lot of, I had all these experiences with clients, but I also did re a lot of research and I interviewed people from all walks of life who had been identified as starting changes and kind of created what that, that profile. And one of the things that's in that is very much what you just mentioned that, you know, um, that ability, that, that kind of agile planner of, because you can't lay it out. A lot of us, especially that come out of these organizations that mm -hmm. you lay out the plan and you go and you do it. And it never, if you change the plan, you've kind of failed. Mm. Totally wrong mindset. And I think those are just a million examples that kind of explain how do you start a change? How do you lead a change in a variety of circumstances and, and the, the behaviors associated with the actions associated with it? And right now, everywhere, as I mentioned in, in the, and the pre-talk is that everything is about change in the yeah. workplace. There's not one thing that's not no. changing daily. We have more coming at us right now than ever before mm -hmm. and going through that. So when you talk about make waves and you talk about being the change maker, and it's funny because it's funny how you said, well, I'm not the risk taker, but I'm, but I'm you not. made change, but you made change in your life. I did. You started your business or, but you did all the research. So what are your tips for leading change? in the workplace or with yourself. Right. Well, I think there's a lot of them. One of them is, um, we talk about mindset, Dana, a little bit you yeah. know, in our earlier conversation. That is the unspoken. There's a million change models out there. If that's all we needed, we would be experts on, on change. Mm -hmm. the, the difference maker, I think, is the people that really were comfortable in leading and starting change, they had a mindset of, I can figure this out. I don't know everything today, but I can figure it out. Also that um, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. It's okay. I can, I, I can stand here even though I'm uncomfortable. I don't know all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that mindset is very, very important. And self-awareness, like you know, you talk about, you know, on, on Clifton Strength Finders, right. you need to know what you're bringing. What's in your, always my term is, what's in your personal backpack? You're carrying mm -hmm. it with you wherever you go. No one can see it, but it, you know, it's not situational. It's just, that's who I am. Like I'm a perfectionist or I am a, you know, I'm very risk averse, whatever it is, like knowing those things about you that have been baked inside of you since you were young, so mindset matters. The, the other thing I'll say, there's a million things we could talk about, but the other yeah. thing is start. Mm -hmm. Find the way to start mm -hmm. because one step leads to another. There are, you know, that incrementalist mindset, if mm -hmm. sometimes taking the first step on any change, if it's like you want to work out more, you want to, um, you want to write a book, you, whatever that, that new thing you want to do, um, one step. And sometimes it's going to talk to somebody and get their ideas or it's research or it's something. What's mm -hmm. my first step going to be? What is the, what can I do today? What can I do this week? Answer it. 
I love that. And I'm hearing a lot of input. Uh, input is that tool that, or that strength that you like to gather the information, mm -hmm. um, gather, gather so that you can have all the information. But it sounded like as you were working on the book, you did a lot of research. I and did. then as you were starting your own business, you did a lot of research, um, yes. talking to people. So there's a theme there. I'm seeing if somebody doesn't have that talent, what like when you said you ready, you got ready to start the book, you talked to like a lot of people, you had your uh, mentor, how did you manage yourself to work hard? What did you do as a female working mom yep. doing all the other things you were doing? How did you manage to do that? Because there's people out there that say, I have a book in me. I just don't even know where to start. And you're saying, just start. Go. Yes. Figure. And, and there's some fundamental, talk to someone who's written a book, get some basics. Yeah. I've had a lot of people come to me for advice. Like, well, do you want to self-publish? Do you want to try to get a, a publisher? Do you want to, cause all those are different paths. What's your purpose? Is it to promote your business? Is it to, um, you know, create a ramp for you to speak? Like you got to know your why and what does success look like for you? Cause it's different for everybody. I also mm -hmm. think, um, the research piece, like if you're going to take on any change, any new thing, I always say, you can't already know everything you need to know. Yeah. You absolutely. can't. If you yeah. think you, if you think mm -hmm. you, you already know, you are probably going to have a very uphill battle. So you got to realize what, what is it that I don't know about this new thing? And I'm, um, Part of that is for me, that's, I, I want to educate myself, but I would think that's kind of true for anybody. I think that's an important, like in the, in the book, I talk about the think, no, do model, super simple, but no is what do I need to know and learn that I do not know today? Because there will be things. If, if your list is, if you, is, your list is empty, might mm -hmm. need to take another look because you haven't done mm -hmm. it before, right? You can't hardly have all the answers. You can't. That's a great. So you wrote the book seven years ago. Now you're working on updating. Is that right? You're, are yeah. you're getting actually, next yeah. it's, it's finished. Actually, the second edition is coming out in um, September, middle of September. And I think uh, the main, I updated quite a, you know, a certain portion of it, quite a bit of it, maybe 30, 40%, but a lot more emphasis on mindset, which is what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. And I added a lot more on that because I really come to appreciate just what a difference that makes for people um, just believing I can do it. I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take it one step at a time. You know, I think one other thing that's worth mentioning on that mindset is um, perfectionism. Mm. And, and there are many of us, and I'm, I'm far from perfect, but I'm pretty much perfectionist on stuff I care about a lot. And if you are a perfectionist, this, you want, what do you want? You want it, to, it has to be perfect, has to be great. And I have to know it's going to be great before I start. And so I think that is one of, that's a big obstacle for people because what we're talking about here, doing the new thing, you're going to have to, you're going to have to step out there and it's mm -hmm. not going to, you, you're not going to, what's the, I always say, um, if you, if you already have all the answers, you've waited too long, right? You, you don't. Absolutely. You, know, you can. Absolutely. And I think there's still that energy of, uh, as we're talking to females, if we're talking to corporate leaders, if we're talking to women that are burnt out right now, they're like, I don't even have any space right now in my life to do that. But it could be something they continue to work on. I had a friend that wrote a book. In fact, she created this artwork right here. She I love it, out. by the way. And she had been posting on her Instagram every day a piece of her art and a message. And I think she did it during Advent. Anyway, that became her book. She didn't, it was already there. She didn't have to, I mean, she had to do a lot of hard work on it and right. get it there, right. but, um, but it was like, she just took something simple she'd been doing and created. So like you said, you could, you could create a book from, it depends on what your motive is and what, what, that's you, right. Why you want to create it. And she had been getting that stuff out of herself, um, of what was on her heart mm -hmm. through her Instagram feed mm -hmm. every day for a, a designated period of time, but that's how she did it. And yeah. I thought that was really smart um, and, and gave her that baseline as she was starting her book. Sure. But I think the other thing too, when, when we're taught, and that was kind of how she got her mindset around it. But I think when you think about make waves and you think about mindset and you think mm -hmm. about those people out there, what are some lessons that you want them to take from the book after they've read it? What would be the key things you would want them to take once they open up your new revision right. or even see the old one? 
Right. And I think um, mindset is one. And we've talked about that a little bit already. Learning what you need to learn. And then I also think um, when it comes to the do, that's when you actually get into the planning. Um, and I think we've touched on this a little bit. Experiment. Try some things and expect that some won't work. Um, when you're doing your plan, know that your plan is going to change. It's, you know, adaptable persistence is one of the wave maker DNA where, you know, I would say it's kind of like, you know, the child at the playground in the maze, mm-hmm. you hit a wall, turn left in another <laughs> wall, keep, but you keep, you keep going. And so in your planning, you've got to think about it that way. I also think, um, and this touches a little bit on mindset, but it also shows up in the way you actually do your planning is you cannot let your ego take mm-hmm. the wheel Yeah, because you're, you know, this is the other thing I, I had to learn hard and I, people told me this, but when you start a business or you do anything that, that you're, that is going to require involvement, engagement from others, um, you will be ignored, mm-hmm. rejected, um, lack of interest. People will show interest, but never follow up. Mm -hmm. And you have to like, you know, get that mindset of, oh, well, Mm -hmm. you know, and not, if your ego's at the wheel, you're going to stop. And I think that is very important. If you, and for a a lot of us, I certainly, Mm -hmm. I I grew up people pleaser, wanted everybody to be happy. That is, um, you know, I still work on that. That is like, it's, mm-hmm. it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And you that know? is so common and it, it is, is so common. I work on that too. And just be, you know, trying to be, not be codependent, right? Not help mm-hmm. everybody get what they need to do on their own. Right. And that's right. That's and right. It's, it's as a coach consultant, we come in and we meet with people and we want to help them, but we can only give them the tools and Mm-hmm. Give them the guidance and be that person in the in the seat, not in the driver's seat, but in in the passenger seat, just asking yeah. questions. And sure. so, you got the book going. You mm-hmm. you started your business. Let's talk a little bit about how you got your business going and actually were able to sell it. That's that's pretty exciting. I mean, did you grow it to a certain amount of people and then sell yeah. it? Just, yeah, that well, is. It's funny because it was never like the acquisition of the business, which I, you know, for confidentiality reasons, I won't talk too much about, but yeah. we, it was never like that was the, it had to be that. I think sure. it was, you know, eventually grew the business, create a partnership, other wonderful leaders. And it was our real main focus was sustainability. And we felt like mm-hmm. we had wonderful relationships with clients. We had a fantastic team. How do we keep this business mm-hmm. sustainable? And so we ended up, we pursued multiple options and tried to figure out what we thought the right thing was. And so going through this acquisition, we felt was the right thing for sustainability and growth and letting um, the people that work for us continue to have good careers and, and all. But that was never like, we, you know, I know some people that was their in game, like they, from yeah. the beginning, they, you know, in their thirties, they're talking about, right. that. I mean, that was really never the case, but we did, we were fortunate in that we kind of kept growing. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, in realizing that, you know, the team was getting bigger, the business was getting more complex, which was what we wanted. I mean, it, it was mm-hmm. a success story for sure, but it was well, and bit I- by bit. Yeah. And I loved how you talked about in your book, you use the words adaptable, adaptable persistence. And it sounds like in yeah. your, in your, in your work and in, in actually how you lived with, oh, we didn't plan this, but look what's happening. Let's, yes. let's help that happen. So as we get ready to close out and mm-hmm. think about these people in the workplace right now, they're going through change and all kinds of things, family, work, friends, mm-hmm. And they're, and they're not getting that time for themselves and they're not getting that time to work on their mindset. And um, they're afraid to make a change or be, you know, make waves is your book. Wake, uh, wave yes. make, right? Yes. Wave, wave making. So how, what would you say to those people in mm-hmm. the last few minutes that we have here? What, and, and you might have a story or something to share, but what is something that you would say to them? I, I love what you've been sharing about the book and taking small steps and getting your mindset right. And, you know, thinking about the planning, think, no, do, but what, 
What do you think for those people right now that are just stuck? They're just stuck. They're stuck. What would you say to them? A couple of things come to mind. One is one of the most common things I see is people are too limited by, it's like you can see what's around you, Mm -hmm. Um, meaning they're too limited by the organization I'm in and the org chart and the next Mm -hmm. thing. And that's their anchor instead of what do I want? What do Mm -hmm. I want to do? And freeing yourself a little bit from that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think, you know, time's your greatest, greatest asset. And mm-hmm. I always say to people, like talk about, you know, strengths finders and being strategic. Mm-hmm. You cannot be strategic if you have no time to think. Yeah. You can't, you know, right. you're just on the hamster wheel, right? And, yeah. and most of us that have been in those big jobs or you're in, you're in business, mm-hmm. you know, if sometimes the, the being more intentional about what matters to you never makes the list because mm-hmm. you've got 14,000 other things mm-hmm. come in your direction and you're just, you know, you're doing whack-a-mole trying to get them off the list. Mm-hmm. And I think having, being very um, careful with your time, do I need to be in this meeting? Do I need, does this need to continue? How can I simplify this? Because time is, you know, I hate talking about like time management. I mean, that, whatever, that's, we've been doing that forever, but mm-hmm. it's more If you don't have any time to think, what do I want? What matters to me? What's important this month? Mm -hmm. We're going to stay on the hamster wheel and you're never going to get off of it. So I think um, how you use your time is is very important. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think I said earlier, take the first step. What's the first step in exploring something new? If it's a new career, it's a new job, it's doing things differently. What's the first step, the first baby step? What can I do this week? You know, I think I could go on, but I think those are a few that come to mind. Yeah. One thing that I see that you you talk about, but um, we haven't talked about it today, mm-hmm. is um, getting idea partners around you, yeah. getting yeah. people around you and building a community. You yeah. say around your wave. Yeah. Um, how, how do you recommend doing that? Well, you know, change is not a solo sport. Unless it's yeah. your own personal career and you're trying, even if it is, who who's around you that can help you mm-hmm. think this through? And so if it's a change you're trying to make on your team, who's going to help you? And it also, um, it, it's like turning loose and letting not be in control of everything back to just, sometimes you're going to have to let things be a little bit more organic, but you need people around you um, and you need to listen to them. Um, doesn't mean you'll do everything they say, but you need idea partners to help you kind of like expand your thinking. Ah, mm-hmm. I hadn't really thought about that. Also people who will be your, your advocates when mm-hmm. you're wanting to start that business, when you want, I know for me, I, every big thing I've ever done and small things, you all, I always had those idea partners around me that, would, that weren't, they weren't necessarily mentors, mm-hmm. but maybe they knew a little bit more than I did. They knew mm-hmm. about starting a business or they knew like, the financials and consulting. How do you do that? I have no, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so you, you have those people around you can go to that will mm-hmm. make you smarter. They'll help you be successful. Um, and I also think with your idea partners, we haven't really talked about this, but I do think I'm big on putting what you want out in the world. Mm-hmm. Saying it. I'm writing a book. It, or, I'm, yeah. I'm going to write a book. I am mm-hmm. going to, whatever it is. I'm going to change my career, whatever it is, and telling people. And if you have idea partners, telling them, this is what I'm mm-hmm. trying to do. They will always, almost everybody will give you ideas and thoughts to help you get there. Yeah. And you've seen a lot of change in your in the corporate space and as entrepreneur oh, yeah. and now as, as you're consulting and speaking. Where do you think the future of change is going in the workplace? What do you think, see? Mm-hmm. It's endless. It's going to be endless. You think about, you know, AI coming into the scene. You think about um, climate change. You think about, you know, um, new efficiencies and tools that don't need. It, it is going to be, you're never, you know, some of us, when you want that change, like, when I just get this done, it's yeah. gonna be, we're going to be good. It's going to be normal. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I, and so I always think the um, getting really comfortable with ambiguity, you know, mm-hmm. research would tell us that when things are uncertain or ambiguity, you have two levers. 
One of them is we want to reduce the ambiguity, want to make it go away, or we can get more comfortable with this. Well, research says we spend 75% of our energy trying to make it go away, which is, as we know, that's going to be a lot of wasted energy. It's not yeah. in control. It just is. So I, I'm always encourage people, you know, increase your chops on getting like getting good in mm -hmm. times of high change, because that is going to continue. Things are never going to get normal, if you will. I mean, it's just not going right. to happen. Right. Yeah. And then just, I think we, we were talking recently uh, with a team about how important the capacity of leaders right now is about being agile. And just sure. being able to, like you said, that adaptable, being adaptable mm -hmm. all the time, persistently right. adaptable. So yeah. I love that. Wow. Well, Patty, we could go on and on. We so could, like, couldn't we? One of those areas, like mindset and just go. But I wanted um, our listeners to hear from you and learn mm -hmm. about your book. What is the best way they can find you? We'll put your links also in our sure. show notes. But Thank what you. is the best way they can find you? Right. We'll have a new website that will be up next week. Okay. Um, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, okay. I also have a podcast like you, which um, sure. you'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Um, afterward, but I have a podcast, um, on, um, called be a wave maker and it is about the topic of change. So mm -hmm. definitely listen to that. And, um, it's on Apple, Spotify, all the normal places. And, um, then my book is coming out second edition in September and you can't pre-order it yet, but it'll be up on Amazon. The, the pre-order will be up soon. That's great. And Patty, I know there's a lot of Patty Johnsons out there. So it's Patty B. Johnson, right? Is that right. how people that find is you my, on like yeah. LinkedIn? And yeah. Well, so. it's Patty Johnson um, is on LinkedIn, but Patty B. Okay. Johnson is kind of the, uh, what's what my new website will be. That's great. Thank That's you. That's great. Well, hopefully by the time this launches, the, you'll, that will be out and yeah, um, the book be. will be almost ready to be out. And I'm excited to hear about this next version. And I think it's so cool that you didn't have to go write another book that you were able just to add on to what you've been yeah. writing. And those same principles apply. It's just, okay, now here's Refresh. the next thing with mindset. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being thank a different you. speaker, making an impact. And sharing your your heart and soul about what you've been your journey with our listeners we appreciate that thank you so much dana appreciate it you have been listening to dominate your day podcast if you're ready to transform your life and workplace from the inside out go to danawilliamsco.com and set up a discovery call we would love to connect with you and equip you with some helpful resources Thank you for listening today, and please take a moment to subscribe to Dominate Your Day, wherever you listen.